Welcome to lecture number 7. In this lecture, we'll take a look at the code of our bar values component. And this is the component that creates the bars for our bar chart. In A-frame, components are created by using the register component method. This takes in two arguments, the name of the component and an object. The object describes every detail of the component. The schema describes how the component handles incoming data. In it is a function that describes how the component is instantiated. Update describes how the component reacts on things that change from the front end, for example, user input like a mouse click. The other four keys show how much a frame is related to game design. Tick is a fixed time interval, like a clock, that can be used, for example, for animations. Remove describes what happens when the component is removed, in a game, for example, with an explosion. Pause and play also make sense when you're developing a game or an interactive VR. The only function we are going to use is the init function. Before we are going to register our component, we need to collect some data that's important to generate the bars. First one is the sensor data array. The items are the names of our bars, but they are also used as references to keys of other objects, like the attributes object, but also they are the keys of our data object. The number of items in this array define the number of bars that will be generated. This means that our application is scalable. Our component has two helper functions that provide data for our attributes object and the text color object. We will need those to set the attributes on our bars. Color, height, position, etc. Then it's time for the register component method. So it takes in our name, bar-values and the object in which we only use the init function. In the init function, the first thing we do is to call the create attributes function because we need these attributes to be created when we create the bars. This function takes in four arguments and actually they are the values of the sensor or at this moment still our mockup data. So we go to the data object and retrieve the values per key. Then we store the marker element and the bar area element into two variables, marker and bar area. Now we are going to look through our sensor data array. And with each iteration, we will create one bar. The manner in which we do so is that on the bar area, we append a child of type a box. This will be our bar. And on the a box element, we will append a child of a text. And this will be the value. Of course, we do not only append the child, but we also have to give it its own attributes. Attributes are collected from the attributes object. For the text element, we also need to construct some of its attributes. We do so during the process of creating the bars. So this is the manner in which we are going to create our four bars. And this is how it looks in code. You see it's divided in four parts. Creating the bar element, filling it with its attributes, and then we go over to the text element, create it, construct attributes, and then add the attributes. Let's take a closer look. First, we take the item of our sensor data array, store it in our variable bar name, and then we can use it as a reference. Our variable bar is no more than a new element of type A box. Bar attributes is an object that we fill using the attributes object and selecting the key that equals our bar name. And then we append our new bar as a child of the bar area. Next, we need to set the attributes for our new element. We do so with this loop. It takes all keys of our bar attributes object and uses them to set the attributes for our element. Then the text. The approach is similar to what we did with the bar. So we have this text variable in which we store a new element of type A text. For some parts of the attributes, we need to do a little bit of construction, especially for the Y position. The text value is simply taken from our data object. But let's first take a closer look at the Y position. When we want to calculate the Y position, we encounter something that is similar to what we saw when we were talking about the grid for our images, our icons. In 3D, the X, Y and Z positions refer to the middle of the object. We want to place our text at the bottom of the bar. And as the text element is a child of the bar element, 
we need to calculate the x, y and z positions relative to that of the bar. And so our y position should be half of the height of the bar, but in a negative direction. And that's why I've multiplied the height with minus 0.5. Then we need a margin correction so the text will not be sticking out of the bar on the bottom or to the right. So the margin correction in the y direction is plus 0.1 and in the x direction is minus 0.1. For the z value we choose a value that makes sure that the text is in front of the bar. And then we set the attributes for the text element. We create the arguments for the position attribute by concatenation. Please notice that we have to stringify our y position. Now the text value is what we have stored in our variable text value and the text color is retrieved from our text color object. Now we have ended our loop by which we make all our bars. And we go back to our init function. What we want to achieve is an animation that is played when the bar chart is being created. This contains three elements. First, we store all children of our bar area element in the variable all bars. So these are all our bars and we want to make sure that all bars are animated in the same manner. The animation variable stores an object in which we describe the animation. If you take a closer look, you will see that it's no more than CSS code. On our marker, we'll add an event listener. Remember that in the marker element we have set emit events to true. So when our application recognizes our marker, it will send out this event, marker found, which will trigger then the function. Inside the function is a set timeout function that creates a delay. So when the time interval of 250 milliseconds has passed, then the function inside our set timeout will be activated. This is an anonymous function, which will iterate through the all bars array. So for each of those elements, it will set the attribute visible to true and animation to the animation that we have defined in the animation variable. This finishes our init function, but still does one thing we need to do because we are working in the module version of A-Frame. And as I explained before, now we need to link the bar area element to our component by setting the attribute and using the name bar values. Then it's time to create our helper functions. See you in the next lecture.